present a paper, and you pr but you present all the guests, right? <laughs> but okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to open our uh, next panel uh, that will host uh, two prominent uh, lawyers. Paul Roa Zohar had mentioned uh, couldn't, couldn't make it, so I'll just present the two speakers and have them speak each for 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, Ehud Udisol is the head of the Corporate and Securities Department at Herzog, Fox and Neyman. He will speak about the judicial review standard in Israel for going private transactions. Uh, Ted Mirvis, you know, I would have described him as the Elvis Presley of corporate governance, but you know, someone had used that <laughs> description for someone else. So I'll just say that he's a partner at the litigation department of uh, Wachtel, Lipton, Rosen, and Kartz. Uh, he argued some of the landmark, he argued and won even, some of the landmark cases regarding corporate governance and M&A and investor rights. And he's a regular lecturer at Harvard Law School, uh, Harvard Business School, and you know, even at the Hebrew University, merges and acquisitions class. No, but you know, I'm presenting, so that's why I said he's a, you know, <laughs> I have the presenter privilege. And also it's a, at, at Zohar's uh, class at Columbia, so, Udi will be the first and then Ted. Okay, good morning. Uh, this lecture was prepared especially for our judges from the economic section. Uh, I had a chance <laughs> to hear them and I beg to defer. Uh, of course, I will speak about the MFW case. Thank you, Judge Holland, for presenting the case for us in a more fluent, better English, and more accurate than I can. But we are speaking on a typical case, which is even more typical in Israel, of a transaction between a controlling shareholder and the company, whereby the co controlling shareholder wants to take over the public shares. So we have a typical going private transaction and as Judge Kaboob mentioned, this is a more typical case in Israel because 80% or over 80% of the companies, in, public companies in Israel has a controlling shareholder, but my conclusions are totally different from those of Judge Kaboob. So the typical transaction is in the MFW case, this is the, the slide that you see, and the question in MFW, as was mentioned, what is the proper standard of review for a going private transaction with the controlling shareholder if the controlling shareholder specifically state that it wanted to do the transaction only and only if the transaction, if two conditions were met. The transaction will be managed and approved by independent special committee and the transaction will also approved by the majority of the minority vote, with the minority vote being non waivable and fully informed. In May 2013, as was mentioned, uh, the today Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Delaware, Ch Chancellor Strine at that time, concluded that such transaction will be protected by the business judgment rule. By the way, Ch Chancellor Strain held that the same standard would apply where the transaction was designed as a merger transaction or as a friendly tender offer as long as the two conditions are met. The meaning of the ruling is that the plaintiff will have to prove that the members of the special committee breached one or more of the basic foundation for their fiduciary duties, acting in good faith, acting without a conflict of interest, and acting on an informed basis, or that the relevant information was not provided to the shareholders before they voted. If the plaintiff cannot show any of this, the court will not review or question the terms and the price of the deal itself, and the deal will be protected from judicial review 
by the business judgment rule. This will be the case except in the very extreme situation of the doctrine of waste, which pretty much never happens. Now, what is the situa situation in Israel? In Israel, up to now, there is no ruling saying what is the standard of review in Israel. Of course, we have the Machteshim Agan case, which I watch it closely since I represented a this, a this case, Machteshim Agan, which is called, by the way, Adama today. An entire fairness standard was applied. But this was an easy case, because it, in the Machteshim Agan case, the transaction was designed and managed by the controlling shareholder, by CUR or IDB, and not by a special committee. And the controlling shareholder received a premium from its holdings. So it is very hard to infer from this case what is the standard, because automatically and rightfully, Judge Keret Meir, in this case, slide automatically to the uh, standard of entire fairness because of the special circumstances in this case. It does not create, in my opinion, a general rule for going private transaction. In, in fact, there was not any real discussion about the applicable standard this is because Machteshim Agan was a clear case of entire fairness, and, it, and this, I think, even under MFW standard, should apply in such circumstances. So, my conclusion, no ruling. Now, what is my suggestion for standard or review in Israel, in the case of a take private transaction by controlling shareholder. I strongly believe, from the same reasons that were mentioned by Justice Kaboub, but my conclusion are totally different, that Israel should adopt the rationale and the conclusion of the MFW decision. In other words, a transaction that was negotiated and approved by independent committee and also approved by the majority of the minority of the shareholders should be protected by the business judgment rule. I would even say that such a standard is especially appropriate for Israel for two least reasons which are unique to Israel. First, the applicable statute in Israel the Israeli Companies Law already requires that a transaction with a controlling shareholder, not in the regular course of business, must be approved by the audit committee, an independent committee of the board, by the board itself, and by a majority of the minority vote of the disinterested shareholders. On this issue, I would mention that in Israel there is a very developed body of law regarding what makes a shareholder disinterested. I think much more developed even than in Delaware. In other words, the statutory requirements for approval of transaction in Israel are consistent with the standard of review adopted in MFW. The second reason is related to the rules of civil procedure in Israel. In Israel, I would mention that generally the procedure of motion to dismiss is not very developed. In particular, when it comes to class actions, there is a case law, <coughs> sorry, that specifically holds that motion to dismiss will almost never be granted in cases of class actions. In addition, the procedure of summary judgment 
does not exist at all in Israel legal system. Because of that, a judge, an Israeli judge, an economic judge in Israel, prior to making his or her decision, in either regular civil cases or in motions to certify claims as cash actions, has the opportunity not only to review the party's briefs, but also to listen to live witness testimony, which is not always the case in Delaware. This way, the judges can make a very informed and well-reasoned decision as to whether the business judgment rule should apply to the case or not. Now, Judge Kaboob mentioned the fact, and I repeat it, that maybe the court in Israel should treat such cases differently because 80 or more percent of the companies in Israel are being controlled by a controlling shareholder. But I don't see this is as a difference to make a different review from the Delaware court review because the judge has to decide on the specific facts and bodies of law on this case. For, for, so what does it matter if it's 80% or 23%? This is what we have to see is the specific issues that in front of the judge. And I think the Israeli system has to show self-restraint, especially because this is what the slide I already talked about. We have a new law, which Delaware doesn't have. Actually, it does not exist in any other place in the world. This is the business concentration law. The new business concentration law that is aimed to unfold pyramids, the typical structure of companies in Israel, and to eliminate cross holdings between financial institutions and non-financial institution by the same controlling shareholder, this law actually will cause many companies in Israel either to being taken private or to find another solution to solve the issues of pyramids and cross holdings. Because of this, I think the economic court should expect that many cases, because of this law especially, will come in front of him in the next few years. If the court will not show self-restraint, and I think the court actually has to give a push for controlling shareholders that has to unfold pyramids and issues of cross holdings, if the court will intervene and will not approve the business judgment rule, I think we'll see a lot of negative effects. And the judge has to understand the anguish and the problems that we, corporate lawyers, directors, advisors, are facing when we are sitting in the boardroom or advising special committees. These are not clear-cut cases that can be looked far behind and expo and look at it as ex facto uh, uh, and an ante. So if we want to provide investor certainty, attract foreign investors, because all those companies will not be bought by local elements, which already suffer from issue of concentration law, and if you want to increase confidence in Israel's financial and legal system, I think courts has to show self-restraint 
and I don't see a difference between a Delaware court and an Israeli court in this, under these circumstances. Uh, now is the time to set the MFW standard as the uniform standard of review for going private transaction with the controlling shareholder. Thank you.